JavaScript along with Adobe Captivate 8 opens up a lot of possibilities for you to create powerful e-learning courses. And now we have made it even simpler for you. In the previous versions, if you were uh, publishing to HTML5 and Swift, you had to write different codes for both uh, the platforms. But not anymore. Now, with the common JS platform that we have introduced in Adobe Captivate 8, you can use the same code and write your JavaScript which will work well on both the formats. Let's see a quick demonstration on how I have used JavaScript to make my e-learning courses more powerful. So here's a course and what I'm doing is I'm calling uh, some dynamic content which will be displayed here with the help of an XML file. So here's the XML file which has all this data related to the variable that I have created here. Let me show you what steps I took. I went to project and variables and here I created this variable which is captivate new features and uh, I just gave it a standard value captivate new features which would appear just in case it's not working. So uh, if you are new to using JavaScript along with captivate it will not work in the preview or published mode uh, when you have the file on your desktop. When you put it on your web server it will start working fine. So uh, I've created this variable and I have added this variable here and I have uh, set the limit of word count to 500 words. That should be enough uh, for a description for all these new features. So I have done that and then on load of the screen, let me bring up the properties, I have executed JavaScript and here's my script. I have added this code here which will set the variable value with the value that I get from the XML file that I have I have created. And for each of these buttons, I have written another JavaScript where, where I'm setting the actual value of the variable with the first value. So you can see that here, this is the first button and the first array is here. This is the description for the first feature. And for the second feature, again, I have done the same. If you see that it picks up the second value of this array. So this way I have created it and I have published it already. I want to show you how you can use this effectively for your localized version of courses. All you have to do is publish this course and then place this XML file which is this one along with the published files. So I've done this and I have placed it on a web server and now I'm playing it from there. So here I will just go and click start. The JavaScript is already executed. I click start and you, I see this message. Click on each tab to learn more about it. This message is coming from this particular action here in the script window where I have defined this particular sentence which says click on each tab to learn more about it. So when there is no value there, uh, this is the text that will appear. So it appears here and as soon as I click a button, you see the text related to it. Here what I have done is I have changed the language uh, in which it appears. I wanted to show you how you can effectively use this for localization. The only change you will have to do is change the XML file. You will not have to republish your Captivate project. Just make changes to the XML file and your localized version of course is ready. Here's Japanese here's my language in me and uh, you can see that the rest of them are still in English so you can use the common JavaScript interface to create your uh, Swift based and HTML5 based courses and it will work fine uh, to get more information about uh, the event listeners and event emitters we have help documentation available you can go and check out what is possible with the common JavaScript interface let me show you one more example where I'm pulling data from a live website. So if you go to this particular uh, course, uh, let me show you the JavaScript that I've written. You can see that I'm taking the data from this particular website, which will uh, give me some live data on the weather based on my geolocation. How cool is that? So I've used the new variable that we have introduced, which is CP info geolocation. I'm checking my geolocation and I'm giving that and I'm providing 
that data here in the website and then pulling the details related uh, to the temperature to the pressure humidity and other things so uh, let me show it to you so here what i have done is here again there are some variables where these uh, details are being published there's city name there's description summary uh, there is humidity latitude longitude so let's go ahead and check this out so again i have uh, published it uh, to a web server let me just play it for you so here's the first screen and let's see if it behaves and you can see that i am in bangalore it's a little cloudy and the pressure is this and the temperature is this and the humidity is 29 how cool is that so you can have uh, data coming in from live website it can be some stock details it can be currency conversion rate it can be weather it can be whatever details you can get from a website Thanks for watching this video and if you are an advanced user, I'm sure you are jumping with joy. Thank you.